is a 22-day academic day course consisting of 169 academic hours. It is MOS non-specific and requires soldiers from combat arms, combat support, and combat service support to interact and work as a team. Instruction at BLC is accomplished through the use of the Army Experiential Learning Module methodology. Lessons are facilitated in a small group setting with a collaborative approach, which allows soldiers to discover information and then apply it to the new and ambiguous situation. Basic Leader course focuses on six leader core competencies, readiness, leadership, training management, communication, operations, and program management. The course is designed to build basic leader and train skills needed to lead a senior size element while providing the foundation for further development along the professional military education learning continuum. Today we present to you class 0420, ready to return to their units and eager to accept the responsibilities of leading, training, motivating, and caring for the soldiers in their charge. Please direct your attention to the far left of the formation of troops where the adjutant, Specialist Wilmot I. Clayton, will direct sound attention.
penalties that this cost to receive a thumb down point presented today by Man Sergeant Major O'Brien. The undergraduate is a student that achieves the second highest academic average and earns a first time go on all performance evaluations and written examinations. During the course, each student has the opportunity to compete for this title. The honor graduate of Basic Leader Course Class 0420, earning a 99.83 grade point average, is Specialist Jonathan E. Neese, in 3rd Battalion, 321st Field Artillery Regiment, 18th Field Artillery Brigade, 18th Airborne Corps. Specialist Neese is receiving a Certificate of Achievement signed by the 18th Airborne Corps Command Team. On behalf of the United Service Automobile Association, Specialist Neese will receive a $50 gift card presented today by Command Sergeant Major Michael J. Arsenault. He will also receive a U.S. flag replica on behalf of the First Command Financial Services, Services presented today by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Greg Larson. Lastly, Specialist Neese will receive a Commandant's Point presented today by Command Sergeant Major O'Brien. Each platoon nominates one soldier to compete for the Distinguished Leadership Award. The selected soldier must score 90% or above on all leadership evaluations and all other graded requirements. The winner is determined through a rigorous screening and boarding process conducted by the branch chief and senior small group leaders. The Distinguished Leadership Awardee of BLC Class 0420 is Specialist Anthony D. Griffin from the 82nd Combat Aviation Brigade, 82nd Airborne Division. This award is named in honor of the first enlisted commandant of the 18th Airborne Corps and Fort Bragg Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. Today we are honored to have the award presented today by its namesake, Command Sergeant Major Retired David L. Clark, who served as Academy Commandant from 1975 to 1977. Special Skibbern will receive the David L. Clark Leadership Award from Command Sergeant Major Retired David L. Clark. Specialist Griffin will receive the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club Leadership Trophy presented today by Fort Bragg Sergeant Audie Murphy Club member and President Staff Sergeant Alexis Rodriguez. On behalf of the Golden Knights, Specialist Griffin will receive a certificate for a tandem jump presented today by Sergeant First Class Dan Osorio. On behalf of the Kappa Lambda Chi Military Fraternity, he will receive a plaque presented today by the President of the Delta Chapter, Mr. Davis. Lastly, Special Scripting will receive a Commandant's form presented today by Command Sergeant Major Brian. The students selected as the Class Iron Warriors are the two soldiers who earned the highest scores in the Iron Warrior competition, a grueling fitness challenge unique to each class. To participate in the competition, students must first score 300 points on the standard Army 3 event Army Physical Fitness Test and volunteer to compete for this title. The female Iron Warrior, BLC Class 0420, is Specialist Alondra J. Vasquez from the 10th Transportation Battalion, 7th Transportation Brigade Expeditionary. She will receive the Iron Warrior Trophy from Command Sergeant Major Arsenal for achieving the highest score during the Iron Warrior competition. On behalf of the Commandant, she will receive a Certificate of Achievement, also presented by Command Sergeant Major Arsenal. On behalf of the United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights, Specialist Vasquez will receive the Sergeant First Class Pedro Munoz Trained and Honor Physical Fitness Award and a Certificate for a Tandem Jump presented today by Sergeant First Class.
Scott, Dan, Osorio. She will also receive a personally engraved tomahawk on behalf of the First Command Financial Services, presented today by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Greg Larson. On behalf of GEICO, Specialist Vasquez will receive a gift certificate presented today by Master Sergeant Retired Cesar Blue. <laughs> On behalf of Home Fire Warriors, Specialist Vasquez will receive an engraved tactical machete presented today by Command Sergeant Major Retired Andre Machado. Lastly, the Vasquez will receive a Commandant's Plan presented today by Command Sergeant Major O'Brien. The Mel Iron Warrior Class, BLC Class 0420, is Specialist Samuel T. Cuss from the 83rd Civil Affairs Battalion, 16th Military Police Brigade. He will receive the Iron Warrior Trophy from Command Sergeant Major Arsenal for achieving the highest score during the Iron Warrior Competition. On behalf of the Commandant, he will receive a Certificate of Achievement, also presented by Command Sergeant Major Arsenal. On behalf of the United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights, let's discuss who received the Sergeant First Class Pedro Munoz Strength and Honor Physical Fitness Award and a Certificate for a Tandem Jump, presented today by Sergeant First Class Dan Osorio. We will also receive a personally engraved tomahawk on behalf of the First Command Financial Services, presented today by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Greg Larson. On behalf of GEICO, Specialist Cuss will receive a gift certificate, presented today by Master Charge Retired Caesar Blue. will receive an engraved tactical machete presented today by Command Sergeant Major Retired Andre Machalos. <laughs> Lastly, Specialist Cuss will receive a Commandant's point presented today by Command Sergeant Major O'Brien. The small group leader of the cycle is selected by the Commandant. The winner is determined through board appearance, written examination, <coughs> demanding physical fitness challenge, and their overall ability to teach, coach, and mentor students during the 22-day course. DLC class 0420, small group leader of the cycle is Staff Sergeant Richard D. Ayers, 8th Group Small Group Leader. Staff Sergeant Ayers is being awarded the Army Achievement Medal for his professionalism, military bearing, and initiative resulted in his selection as a small group leader of the cycle. Staff Sergeant Ayers will also receive a memorandum Accommodation and a certificate of achievement signed by the 18th Airborne Corps Command Team. On behalf of the United Service Automobile Association, Staff Sergeant Ayers received a medallion for, of excellence presented today by Command Sergeant Major Michael J. Arsenal. On behalf of the 1st Command Financial Services, Staff Sergeant Ayers will also receive a U.S. flag replica provided by Lieutenant Colonel Retired. Greg Parsons. On behalf of Caliber Collision, Staff Sergeant Ayers will receive an engraved pen and letter opener set presented by Command Sergeant Major Retired Patrick Brooks. Lastly, Staff Sergeant Ayers will receive a Commandant's Horn presented by Command Sergeant Major O'Brien. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in applauding all the distinguished graduates of Basic Leader Class World War II.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the 18th Air Force and Fort Bragg Non Commissioned Officer Academy, Command Sergeant Major Matthew M. O'Brien. Commanders, Command Sergeant Majors, distinguished guests, sponsors, family, and friends of Basic Leader Corps Class 0420. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules to honor today's graduating class. You have joined an Army team that is in the best shape that I've ever seen. A vast array of te technological advances and capabilities lie at your fingertips. Individually, you will have distinct responsibilities, yet together, as a team, you will be at the forefront of today's Army. You can be extremely proud to have chosen this path. Like those before you, you have completed the first of many steps that will lead you to a very rewarding future. As you stand at ease, Touch eyes with your parents and family members here today. To those who couldn't be here. These are the people who love you, guided and encouraged you, taught you the virtue of hard work, dedication, and service to the country. You, you now recognize this as honor, courage, and commitment. I think you will all agree with me that without their love, guidance, and support, you wouldn't be where you're at at this very moment. Now, to each of you, I say, this is your day. I know the things that others have done to help make this happen, but we all know that the person most responsible for this day is you. Nothing was handed to you these 22 days except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, to lead. Each of you sees that opportunity. I ask each, each of you to remember what you've learned here. Remember what it felt like to be tested, to be challenged, to be a part of a team, where you will now draw upon those things moving forward. Remember your roots and who you are now. You are the future of our great army and you have the ability to accomplish great things. This is my challenge for you. Make your family proud, make your nation proud, make your soldiers proud, most importantly, make yourself proud. If you can look in the mirror every day and stare down the person looking back at you with confidence that you've done your very best and have lived with honor, courage, and commitment, then you can be proud. And never, under, under, never underestimate those around you and those you will lead. These young men and women you're about to lead will blow your mind. Leadership is not a privilege, it's a responsibility. And your job as our future leaders will be to enable the full potential of every person who works with you. Be proud of your accomplishments and I wish each of you continued success. Please join me in a round of applause for our graduating leaders.
That insight about operations around the peninsula helped me understand what my unit actually brought to the fight. It gave me a new perspective on how to view challenges and let me know what I went through if my unit was not unique. It introduced me to people that I've been able to reach out to throughout my career to better help my soldiers and myself. Now, some of those same people are retired and have joined the civilian agencies that still help soldiers. And some are fellow sergeants major across the Army. Talk about powerful and influential friends that all started the network 20 years ago. So I encourage you to not only exchange numbers, but call and text them often enough that that network, also known as your squad, will be there for you throughout your career. When I spoke to you all in the auditorium, I mentioned that there should not be any idle conversations, that every conversation or engagement is an opportunity to learn. But here comes a part of my speech that I want you to put in your rucksacks. You may have heard that in the Army, that we don't like a fair fight. That is true, and we even have a term for it. It's called overmatch. Overmatch can be painted through emerging technology and equipment, but can only be achieved through training and leading the soldiers that maintain the that equipment. Now, well-led and trained soldiers don't mind the equipment to get you there. You, as current and future leaders, are key to ensuring that we maintain overmatch on the battlefield. You will do that by providing the outstanding leadership that all soldiers deserve. You will do that by staying current on policies and doctrines through lifelong learning. You would do that by ensuring, as leaders, we keep the advantage. VLC is designed to start on that lifelong learning process. It is designed to introduce you to doctrine that not is unique, or that is unique to your career field. Up to now, you're probably not focused on what the rest of our army is doing. Look to your left and right. There are 270 leaders out there with you. And if you focus your attention and energy on a problem, that problem does not stand a chance. This is how you achieve overmatch. You achieve overmatch with your squads by getting up every day and striving to be the best at what you do. Master the fundamentals of your craft. Use what you have learned in BLC as a foundation of lifelong learning. From now on, you are part of the solution. When you see something wrong, it is up to you to do something about it, not sit idly by as life passes you. Achieve overmatch in the Army and in life. Approach all aspects of your life and career by not letting it be a fair fight. What can you do to gain the advantage? Do not know, refer back to where I started. Use your network, use your squad. Be there for your other squad members and use the tools that the Army and BLC have given you over the past couple of weeks. The Army has just made you part of another squad. Never let up, keep the advantage. Again, thank you for the chance to talk to you today. Wings to Airborne, all the way. Leader of the cycle, Staff Sergeant Ayers, would like to present Command Sergeant Major Arsenault with a certificate of appreciation on behalf of the NCO Academy. Commission officers, please rise and join us in reciting the creed of the non-commissioned officer. The creed of the non-commissioned officer! The creed of the non-commissioned officer! No one is more professional than I! I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. As a non-commissioned officer, I realize that I'm a member of the time on the floor, which is known as the backbone of the Army. I am proud of the board of non-commissioned officers. Service and my country, regardless of the situation in which I find myself. 
I will not use my grade or position to attain pleasure, profit, or personal safety. Confidence is my watchword. My two basic responsibilities will always be uppermost in my mind. The constitution of my mission and the welfare of my soldiers. I will strive to remain technically and tactically proficient. I am aware of my role as a non-commissioned officer. I will fulfill my responsibilities inherent in that role. All soldiers are entitled to outstanding leadership. I will provide that leadership. I know my soldiers and I'll always place their needs above my own. I will communicate consistently with my soldiers and I will be my Lord. I will be fair and impartial in everything both the Lord and my children. Officers in my unit will have maximum time to accomplish their duties. They will not have to accomplish mine. However, I respect that God knows his own plan on that soldier. I will propose those who my service.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant, Cadillac, and staff of the Asian Airborne Corner Corps of Great job, Mr. Smith. Mr. Cadillac, the Lieutenant Trade On.